multifinancial framework is lower than estimated in the impact assessment. However, it is currently, of course, not possible to provide a fully accurate cost of the Eurosur because the allocation to be provided under the European Earth Observation Programme, Copernicus, uh, has not been determined yet. Uh, it will, of course, take some time until Eurosur will work smoothly and Frontex will also need the first year especially appropriate funding to be able to fully implement the Eurosur as required by the regulation. I am really glad for the cooperation we have had with the European Parliament. Your amendments have significantly improved the text. You have provided the integrated border system with a very strong emphasis on saving lives and giving it a human touch. Uh, and I would like to thank you for this. I think your report can be a very important tool when it comes to interagency cooperation, near real-time information exchange and solidarity. So thank you for the work you have been doing here. Uh, and thank you, Madam President. Thank you very much, Commissioner Malmström. And now it's uh, uh, up to our rapporteur. Mr. Melder, uh, I understand that it's your birthday, so I wish you happy birthday. And you can wish me happy birthday because I had my birthday yesterday. Oh. Okay. <laughs> my, congr my congratulations as well. Uh, my birthday was not today, but last week. Uh, but thanks anyway for the congratulations. Uh, First, I want to thank uh, everybody for the contribution to this debate and for the kind words that were sometimes uh, spoken. As I said uh, earlier, I can recommend the agreement to this House that implies automatically that I reject all the amendments, even the amendments of the Greens. I do not think that it will improve the text. The saving of human lives is, is very elaborately treated in the text, so an extra amendment does not make it better. And on top of that, if it would be accepted, it would jeopardize the whole agreement that we have at the moment. And I think that's not worth it. I think we have to start with this Eurosur as quickly as possible. So I would strongly advise this House not to vote for the amendments of the Greens, despite the very valuable contribution they gave to the uh, this regulation uh, for the establishment and for the active participation. Thank you all very much and uh, I hope we will have after tomorrow a Eurosur regulation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, colleague uh, Mulder. The discussion is concluded and uh, we will vote uh, tomorrow at uh, 12 o'clock. Now, the next item on the agenda is uh, a Commission statement on the suspension of the SWIFT agreement as a result of NSA surveillance. Malmström. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am here tonight to inform you about the actions I have decided to take following the press allegations about the possible access of the U.S. National Security Agency, NSA, to the data exchange through the EU-US TFTP agreement. On the 24th of September, I met many of you in the Libe Committee and informed you about the ongoing efforts to follow up on this matter, which is, of course, of great concern. The discussions in Libe were helpful and confirmed the need to clarify a number of issues. Since the first allegations appeared in the press, as I told you then, uh, I have immediately taken action. In July, I sent a first letter to my US counterparts, and in September the 11th, I called Under Secretary uh, for the Treasury Department, Mr. Cohen, and I told him that I was waiting for substantial information on the alleged tapping. The next day, I also sent him a letter in which I requested opening of consultations under Article 19 of the TFTP agreement. As you know, this is the procedure that is uh, regulated in the agreement in case there are questions or, or uh, uh, things that need to be clarified. In reply to my letter, and I share the letter uh, with the Libre Committee, on the 23rd of September, uh, the US authority provided some explanations, but several important questions remained unanswered. I therefore this Monday met with Under Secretary Cohen in Brussels and I appreciate that he came despite the budgetary constraints. We had an open and very long discussion and he clarified a number of points. During that meeting, Under Secretary Cohen explicitly confirmed that since the entry into force of the TFTP agreement, the US government has not collected financial messaging from SWIFT in the EU. He also said 
that the US government has not served any subpoenas on SWIFT in the EU during that period. I insisted to have that very important confirmation statement confirmed in writing. We also discussed in some detail the established channels through which the US do obtain financial information in SWIFT format used by financial institutions worldwide. Also, on this I ask for further explanations in writing in order to be absolutely sure that these mechanisms do not conflict with the TFTP agreement. At this stage, therefore, our contacts with SWIFT and the US government have not revealed any evidence that the TFTP agreement has been violated. Some further clarifications are, however, needed before we can draw full conclusions. Concluding the consultations with the US remains on the top of my agenda and also for my staff and we intend to do our best to get all information needed in the very near future. And of course, I will make sure that you are fully informed about future development uh, at the outcome of these consultations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Commissioner. And now the speakers on behalf of the political groups. So the first speaker will be Mr. Diaz de Mera for the EPP group. Thank you very much, Madam. At the previous plenary session uh, on the debate on the future of uh, the internal security strategy, we had said that in order to effectively combat uh, terrorism, uh, we had uh, to tackle prevention. I want to go into this in a bit more detail uh, at this session. Uh, the media has uh, raised some concern amongst uh, European uh, citizens, and uh, uh, we are looking at uh, whether we can uh, find evidence of spying on the part of the NSA. We don't have uh, any corroboration of these activities. Uh, both uh, Mrs. Malmstrom and the director of Europol have said, uh, and uh, you have just repeated that, and that you repeated this in your talks with Under Secretary Cohen, uh, that there's still no firm evidence uh, of uh, NSA snooping. So I would prefer to suspend uh, the agreement uh, until we have uh, firm proof. Uh, TFTP is, however, an efficient uh, weapon in order to combat and limit the activities of terrorist groups. Uh, we show this was proven in the Rebeck uh, uh, case in Norway. Thanks uh, to TFTP, we managed to identify in a very short space of time the channels used uh, to gather the funds which were used to finance the terrorist attack. Uh, the articles of the convention or the agreement to lay down what action should be taken if one of the parties does not comply with the provisions of the agreement. What is not uh, make clear is uh whether you decisions should be taken unilaterally to suspend agreements. It does not mention that at all. We have to uh, follow proper legal channels and we should continue to apply uh, perhaps these provisions until we have uh, firm evidence. Uh, there appears to be infringement of our rights and our privacy and I think that our concerns in this regard are legitimate and uh, justifiable. We are still seeking the truth. We're still uh, carrying out our investigations. We must not act in haste. We cannot uh, eradicate an element of risk, uh, creating further risk without uh, proof, hard evidence. Thank you. Colleague uh, Diaz de Mera, there is a blue card for you from colleague Stoyano. Yes, colleague, you have a question. Thank you very much, uh, Madam President. I was wondering if uh, Mr. Diaz de could answer a question. How do you know that this treaty has been infringed? Uh, because the Commissioner says so? I mean, of course we're dealing with a, a, a breach of the treaty, but of course they're not going to tell us that they've uh, breached the treaty. Thank you very much, Mr. Stoyanov. If you had uh, paid uh, due attention to my comments, you would not really have had to ask that question because I didn't say what you say I have said. I said that there is reasonable 
drought. I've said that we have concerns, and this is why the Parliament is uh, investigating. I added uh, that uh, we cannot suspend an agreement on the basis of an assumption. Uh, we can suspend it if we had hard evidence, but not on the basis of an assumption. Thank you very much. Mrs. Sippel is next. Two minutes. Thank you very much, Madam President. Now, Mrs. Malmström, I'll remind you once again that before the recent revelations, there were already problems with the implementation of this agreement. And I should remind you once again that long before the current agreement was in force, the USA was using SWIFT data on their servers. So. These facts were only revealed through media reports. The current media reports with very serious accusations basically uh, jeopardize the very existence of this agreement. You mentioned the letter to David Cohen and the uh, wording of the answer is rather odd, I find. He's saying terrorist financing tracking program is a good thing and uh, 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 particularly for getting swift data that they can't get them through other means. Well, what other means is he talking about? And he can't get any data from swift in Europe, fair enough, but they can actually get it from third countries, perhaps. Or maybe they... Uh, well, who knows? But for me, this agreement uh, can't be continued on, those, those, uh, on that basis. My colleague, Mr. Diaz de Mera, said we shouldn't be over hasty here, but... The criticism of the agreement and the uh, uh, media report simply can't be brushed under the carpet. Now, the Commission promised us a long time ago that, the, uh, that there sh uh, should be a proposal for uh, data extraction on EU uh, territory, but there's still no proposal. I think that's worth uh, criticising. And if are we over hasty in suspending the agreement? Well, no. If we had proof, then we would have, wouldn't be suspending this agreement. We'd be cancelling it. Uh, no, we need to suspend it now so we can go at intense research into the situation and exert pressure so that the USA have time to provide proof of whether or not a, a, a violation has taken place. In the meantime, we can't allow... Uh, our name to uh, be given to an agreement that allows European citizens' data to be abused. Mrs. Felt, please. Um, my EPP colleague just said we need the facts, not rush into conclusions. I absolutely agree, and therefore it's all the more remarkable that no investigation has taken place at all. Not a single member state has asked the cybercrime unit of Europol, the, uh, the, the institution that should be investigating, to investigate. Not even the Dutch government, the country where the main server of Switch is located, has investigated. No, the Dutch government says, no, we leave this to a, a, a working group of experts. These are civil servants meeting behind closed doors and they are told by the Americans everything is fine. Of course we don't break into your service. But there are very strong indications, my dear colleague of the EPP, strong enough indications to not rely on the scout's honor of Mr. Cohen, not rely on the declarations of SWIFT, but to investigate, to actually go to the site of SWIFT, to the service of SWIFT and investigate. Why haven't the Member States asked Europol to investigate? Why do we not insist, why does the Commission not insist that the Dutch government investigates uh, uh, on the spot what has happened? Because frankly, we have no reason anymore to trust the Americans on their blue eyes. The, the, it's not just media reports, it is documents that have been uh, that have been uh, retrieved by Mr. Snowden. And as a matter of fact, the Americans have never denied that this is the case. The Americans say, we have not had unauthorized access to the SWIFT server. 
But they do say they reserve the right to do so. That in itself is a breach of the agreement. And I very much agree with my colleague Zippel. If we do not decide to terminate the agreement right now, then we should at least suspend it and take the time to investigate. And a final thing, Madam Commissioner and the empty chair of the Council, the usual empty chair of the Council. This is also about something else. This was the very first let's say, serious international agreement that was proved under the, uh, the Lisbon Treaty. This was the first agreement where we were asked for consent. The problem is, once we sign, which is essentially a blank check, we are out of the game. But we will be asked by the Commission and by the Council to give consent to further international agreements. So this is a test case. If this House would adopt a statement calling for the suspension or termination of the agreement and the Commission and the Council do not react accordingly, that means that this House is not taken seriously and will not give its consent to future agreements. This is about the democracy in Europe. Thank you, Mrs. Invelt. Colleague Albrecht, on behalf of the Greens. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner. I really uh, have to say I'm a bit shocked that you are so uh, um, fine with these answers uh, by the U.S. government. I would just want to repeat what has been said by uh, Birgit Zippel already. Uh, Mr. Cohen wrote that the U.S. government is using the TFTP to obtain SWIFT data that we, so quote, do not obtain from other sources. I mean, this is obvious. That, this is trying to, uh, that they try to uh, uh, avoid to take really account to what they do and if they are in compliance with the SWIFT agreement, obviously they are not. Obviously they refer to the authority which they give in their own laws to access these data and I think that is reason enough to suspend the agreement and to investigate with a real investigation. And I'm also shocked to repeat that also, that no EU government and no EU authority, law enforcement authority, in, is investigating in this obvious uh, information on a possible cyber attack on the SWIFT, uh, Swift company and on European personal, uh, personal data. So we need to really take uh, into, a, uh, into our uh, work here at the European Parliament the opportunity to cancel this agreement and to renegotiate the terms of cooperation and police and justice cooperation with the United States and to make sure that EU companies and companies like SWIFT have to, has to, have to follow data security and data protection regulation and uh, directive as we have it today and make sure that these rules are enforced, better enforced in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, colleague Kekhoff. Chairman, Commissioner, I'm glad we have the opportunity to discuss this issue today and uh, as I would like to ask the Commissioner and his Parliament whether it honestly thinks that threats of suspending important anti-terror legislation is really in the best interest of the people of Europe as a whole. Security officials have called the leaked NSA documents by Edward Snowden the greatest threat to Western security in history. The head of MI5 in the UK is today calling the leaks a gift to terrorists. And yet here we are talking about delivering another gift to those who pose a very real and constant threat to Europe's safety. It's absolutely ridiculous. So often members in this House claim to speak for all our European citizens, but I wish to speak for those who want to live in a Europe which is safe and secure for them and their families. By all means, the appropriate authorities should investigate data breaches of European citizens and this Parliament can provide better protection for European citizens and strengthen data protection. But let's do this in a way that involves gathering hard facts and that leaves, us, leaves aside reckless decision making. If this Parliament wants the powers it claims it's entitled to then it needs to learn to be more responsible. No one is denying that we are here to protect the rights and freedoms of citizens but I am not prepared to do this by seriously risking their safety and their lives. I will certainly not be supporting any parliamentary action which takes such an unmeasured and irresponsible view on such an incredibly important issue, thereby seriously prejudicing our international relations and world security. Or are we going to suspend all our agreements or any of our agreements whenever a newspaper or a renegade makes an allegation? What a way to run Europe.
Thank you very much, uh, colleague uh, Kekhope. Uh, colleague Inveld has a question for you. Do you accept? Yeah, I'm, I'm asking you whether you will accept him for Mrs. Inveld. Okay. Colleague, I, I'm delighted to hear that you want to, to get the facts. Would you then agree to calling for an official investigation by the Cybercrime Unit in Europol, and actually your party uh, in the UK, uh, on behalf of the government, might ask for such an investigation. I mean, if you don't trust us, if you don't trust the European Parliament, then you should trust Europol. And secondly, um, you say that this is essential for security and the fight against terrorism, but uh, Secretary Cohen himself, in his letter, acknowledges that the data are being used for things unrelated to terrorism. Would you agree that the Americans would have the right to use the data for, for purposes unrelated to terrorism? Thank you. Well, um, I always get a blue card from you, Sophie. Um, I, uh, I'm quite prepared to say to you this, that I believe that the appropriate authorities should always investigate allegations. I have no problem with that at all. What I have a problem with is the incredibly prejudiced and biased approach that is taken when an allegation is made, i.e. condemning and uh, concluding uh, that uh, a party or an agency or a country should be convicted before any real evidence of any value whatsoever has been seen. That appears to be more and more the case in this Parliament, and I'm afraid to say, as far as I'm concerned, I think it is unworthy and unacceptable. Thank you very much. Mrs. Ernst is next. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. What we're doing today is... Uh, the same as we always do when it comes to SWIFT. Every time SWIFT is on the agenda, we realize that we don't get any real facts, we don't get the truth, we're faced with a black box, and we're faced with secrecy. Now, we've got data protection experts, we've heard from NSA experts from the U.S. and the European uh, Union is being called upon by them to suspend SWIFT to try and investigate what is going on. So that is why we need to have such an investigation. I mean, the only proof that you seem to have, Ms. Malmstrom, is a letter. A letter? Is that the basis on which you are investigating? I mean, what kind of facts or hard evidence do you have? I mean, we wouldn't have countenanced this in any other situation, but in this particular instance, you seem to be admitting the letter in evidence. But in actual fact, I don't think there's any real realization of the problem, any effort to correct what has happened before. Um, it is possible for us, of course, to suspend SWIFT under certain circumstances at any time. So I really can't understand your behavior. I really don't think that you behave in the same way to any other country. Now, I would, of course, like us to terminate the whole program, but be my preference. But if you're unwilling to do that, then at the very least you should suspend it, because otherwise I think we look ridiculous. Next speaker is Mrs. Morvai. Thank you very much, Madam President. Well, I'm a trained lawyer and I'm convinced that the, uh, uh, if you have a, a violation of the law, there need to be legal consequences. But it seems that there's a, a, a violation against the citizens of Europe and uh, Europe's citizens and Europe's companies are not going to have any legal consequences. But I'm actually thinking of the Ecolo report. Now this uh, was before the uh, events of the, the 11th of September 2001. This report said that uh, the USA had uh, been engaged in mass listening in to uh, the European citizens. Were there legal consequences from that report or, or not? I'm not sure. Our uh, European Parliament has been dealing for the last 
10 years or so with the uh, terrible uh, uh, conditions in the Guantanamo pr uh, prison camp. And there have been uh, lots of uh, suspicions of torture. Have there been legal consequences there? No. And here we're also talking about uh, people's lives as well. The question is, uh, now we have uh, lots of information being provided to the uh, world median, and it seems that there are going to be no legal consequences there either. So what concrete steps do the EU intend to make to try and ensure that these legal violations are going to have legal consequences? Mr. Foss, please. Well, thank you very much indeed, Madam President. Well, I uh, too uh, wish to offer congratulations uh, on the occasion of the birthday. Now, we need to look at the value of the SWIFT agreement. Now, the value of the agreement lies in its contribution to data protection as well as to the fight against terrorism. And as things currently stand, I fail to grasp why people now think that an agreement has to be suspended because of all this NSA business, but nothing has yet been proven. Now, the whole parliament firmly believes that it is vital that we monitor the financing of terrorist groups, and absolutely nothing has changed. We have always assumed that a swift agreement would only ever be suspended if we found ourselves in a position to do something similar ourselves, but as things currently stand, we are not. So I really think that it would be irresponsible from a security point of view to suspend the SWIFT agreement. And why are we even calling for an agreement to be suspended before we've even finished our investigations in the committee, before the team that we set up has completed its work? I mean, why can't we even wait until we have the results of our own investigation? Because we've all seen that we have no hard evidence, no hard facts. We haven't heard anything from the Commissioner. We haven't done anything that's in violation of the treaty. The SWIFT business has shown us just how high its data protection and network requirements are. SWIFT um, has uh, not in any way suggested that that is not the case. Apparently, there's only something in the NSA handbook which indicates that there may be any monitoring of SWIFT. Now, there are two different approaches here. There is the legal approach, the agreement, and an illegal approach, and I really can't understand why we wouldn't take the legal approach. We want to get the U.S. back on the right track. I mean, why would you allow them to illegally capture data? But if the treaty is not being respected, if the NSA has circumvented the treaty in any way, then we're going to require our own TFTP system for our own security. Additional minutes. Nevertheless, colleague Voss, uh, uh, colleague Invelt would like uh, to ask you a question. Sophie. Yes, thank you. Uh, Mr. Voss, everybody here is mentioning facts. Uh, many claims have been made about the, 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 the usefulness and the necessity of these, these uh, data for the fight against terrorism. These claims are completely unfounded. But nevertheless, my question to you is, will your group and will your government support an investigation by the Europol Cybercrime Unit? Because neither you nor I are experts. Neither you nor I have been inside SWIFT. We've not been able to look in the server. Don't you think we should leave it to the real experts, the IT experts, to investigate on the spot whether there has been unauthorized access or the possibility? Will you support that proposal? Yes, Mr. Also, ich kann nicht well, I fail to see why the German 
government wouldn't be interested in what has happened. So I can't really understand your question. What is more, I have to say that we've questioned Swift on this and we've got the know-how and you yourself have said that we can or they said that they can uncover the trail and they can't see any evidence of this that's what Swift have said so as it's currently stand the evidence is not there there is no proof so if we are to act properly if we are to act in accordance with the treaty then we have to say that we either support the agreement, the treaty, or not. Colleague Moraes has the floor. Thank you, President. My colleague, Mrs. Sipple, set out many of the concerns uh, within my group. Let me just uh, begin with the issue of the inquiry and the um, investigation which Mr. Voss has raised. I raised within the inquiry the issue of the cybercrime unit of Europol, and I understand that Rob Wainwright has said that intelligence breaches can be investigated. And if that's the case, then, I mean, the Council is not here, but if that is the case, then at least one member state should request such an investigation. And here lies the problem. I mean, you know, Mr. Kirkhope is talking about the wider existential question of whether we investigate the Snowden leaks at all. That can be separated from this immediate question of whether we can investigate exactly what is going on with an extremely valuable SWIFT agreement. And I don't disagree with what, what, what Mr. Voss has said. He's taken off his headphones, so he doesn't know what I'm saying. I hope I get an extra minute for this when he comes back. I'm not going to get an extra minute. It's cold. We're tired. Give me an extra 15 seconds. Okay, so nobody's understanding this. Okay, so the point is that we don't know exactly what's happening because in the inquiry, nobody is there on oath. We just have the cooperation of witnesses. So we're relying on you, Commissioner, to get as many answers as possible. And then we rely on that investigation to see what we do in our political decision on suspension or cancellation. Now, we don't have the powers within the European Parliament or as MEPs to cancel that agreement. It's a majority decision, I understand, within the Council and that's the mechanism. And I think Mrs. Intervelt is right. We have future powers in terms of our consent procedure for future agreements. This is ultimately the political leverage we have. So that's the outcome of this whole situation. So for my group, I just want to repeat without going into a great amount of detail that SWIFT is an extremely important agreement for us and our group. We negotiated it in this parliament. We take it seriously. We understand its security implications and we take all of that seriously. For that reason, we want the most, we want the most detailed investigation possible. We will assess it and then, sorry um, Chair, we will then make an assessment and then we will make a political decision on suspension, a temporary suspension and then a renegotiation. Uh, we don't go to cancel this um, just on a whim. It's a serious decision we have to make, but it is a political decision Thank at the end of the day. Thank you very much, colleague Moraes. Mayer. Mr. Mayor, please. Thank you very much, Madam. I think that uh, the very minimum we should do is uh, to freeze, to suspend the agreement. I think that is the very minimum that we can do uh, here. I think uh, that we, as Europeans, must defend our sovereignty and uh, defend uh, the respect of human rights in uh, the European Union. Uh, some people don't want to see what is quite clear, or because it's the North American administration that has carried out uh, this, uh, these spying activities, the largest in scope since the Second World War, without any supervision whatsoever. Some uh, don't want to see this. Uh, they don't want to accept this, but there is uh, sufficient evidence. Uh, and they have done the same in other regions in Latin America, for instance. Uh, why should we react differently to uh, the reaction for instance, of others, such as Ilma Rousseff, the president of Brazil, when uh, she found out, uh, given the same evidence that we have received, uh, that there had been uh, spying, she demanded of President Obama an explanation. 
I think that the European Union should have done the same. and They should have gone directly to the person in charge, to President Obama, and ask uh, that he explain and shoulder his responsibilities in this regard. I think that this is a, this is a criminal act which has been carried out in the European Union. In my country and in other European Union member states, this is a considered a criminal act. Mr. Innenhauser. Yeah, yes, thank you very much. Well, we shouldn't forget how this agreement came into being at the outset. A few years ago, the Americans illegally took SWIFT bank data from the Europeans. Well, this was uh, uh, not punished by the EU. It was actually legalized retrospectively through this agreement. The question of whether we should suspend this agreement is quite simple. Well, yes, of course we should. I'd go as far as to say that we should also be uh, giving notice that to, uh, we should be cancelling this agreement. Now, we should be honest here. We should be on enough, uh, honest enough to say that suspending this uh, agreement, setting up a committee of inquiry, uh, nominating Edward Snowden for the uh, Sakharov Prize are not going to solve the problem. What is the basic problem here? The problem is we are turning people into data objects. These objects are then supervised and traded by uh, uh, um, the intelligence authorities. They are basically losing their rights. It's eroding the relationship between state and citizens. It's giving uh, as a feeling of fear and s spreading uh, distrust. We need a vision to respond to this. A vision that's as, that's as great as the discovery of America or the uh, uh, conquest of space. We need to be asking the big questions, the questions of internet rights, internet infrastructure, infinite ec uh, economy, the great questions of uh, uh, research that can uh, correspond to uh, uh, data protection. The NSA people will laugh themselves to bits when they listen to our debates. Thank you, Mr. Van den Kamp. Madam Chair, thank you very much indeed. First of all, and this is not what I usually do, I would like uh, to congratulate the Commissioner for her, the fact that she is, I think, on top of uh, this matter. I think. Uh, she has uh, spoken to the Americans, uh, and I think that Mrs. Malmstrom is keeping a close watch on uh, this uh, matter. Uh, I am a bit familiar with the history of the TFTP. I know that Dutch citizens are very concerned indeed about what has happened here and what is happening. Uh, and uh, uh, we. All our discussions with NSA representatives don't make this any easier. We should look at the scope of the agreement uh, to Im include everything in uh, this uh, in the context of uh, combating terrorism is perhaps too limited a way of looking at things. What about the economic angle? We're talking about uh, a political infrastructure provider here. I assume that, uh, that this uh, should continue to be considered as such. Uh, we're talking about uh, detection, about tracking, about all sorts of things here. And we need to respect uh, certain rights, especially especially privacy, and we must continue to combat this form of financial terrorism. But we have economic obligations vis-à-vis uh, -vis the rest of the world, uh, and this must also be respected. Thank you. Mr. López Aguilar. Madam President, uh, now... Let me see what I can do. Uh, irrespective of uh, how people voted as regards TFTP, uh, uh, we're becoming truculent in this debate. Uh, we keep on talking about hard evidence and the facts. And despite the efforts of this European Parliament to verify the facts uh, uh, and uh, represent uh, the feelings of millions of European citizens who f are scandalized by this, we cannot verify the facts because we don't have the necessary information. The necessary information to do so is being denied us. Uh, the NSA 
has not cogently denied that it has uh, swift data available to it uh, and that it has not obtained this data uh, through uh, irregular or illegal channels. They have not denied this, and this in itself calls into question the terms of the treaty, and it can be interpreted as a breach of the agreement. Uh, and this is very serious indeed and should be taken seriously. In uh, that surveillance inquiry that is being carried out uh, uh, in the Libby Committee, we rebutted that allegation, or we gave them the opportunity to rebut the allegation, and it wasn't rebutted. It wasn't rebutted by Under Secretary Cohen, nor was it rebutted by the representative of SWIFT itself. Uh, they could not uh, uh, cogently deny that uh, their data transmission systems weren't subject to cyber attack on the part of the NCA. And this is very serious indeed. So the question then would to the Commission would be the following. Is the Commission thinking, uh, given uh, and the fact that there seems to be a clear breach of the agreement, are they thinking that there and, it, and because uh, there has been no cogent denial that uh, the SWIFT data is uh, being received through irregular channels, are they thinking of suspending the agreement? Mrs. Sosa Wagner, Mr. Sosa Wagner, Madam uh, Chair, Madam President, uh, I think uh, that the news uh, that uh, we keep on hearing and reading about in our newspapers on the actions of the NSA are a serious cause for concern, uh, as we can see in the debate here this evening. I think that the Commission needs uh, to collect the necessary evidence, the necessary information uh, uh, to uh, uh, stop uh, this state of affairs in the European Union. We need to take precautionary measures to protect and defend uh, the fundamental rights of European citizens. This uh, event should uh, launch a reform on uh, our rules and regulations uh, to protect uh, the confidentiality of data and to protect uh, privacy. We need uh, to do this uh, post haste. Uh, I think uh, that uh, earlier in many years ago uh, we needed to, to breathe fresh air and uh, and uh, I think that today this fresh air should be provided by the European Union. They should be the those that defend and guarantee that our fundamental rights to privacy should be uh, respected uh, and they should uh, protect us uh, from other darker forces. Thank you. Thank you very much. Madam, Madam President, well, I just summarized the discussion, namely that we should look at what the NSA has done in terms of monitoring those who have been suspected of terrorism. But the Parliament has fought long and hard to protect the private sphere. This is the point of departure for the way in which the intelligence services seem to be going through the back door to monitor financial transactions. The European Parliament is the guardian of the rights of our citizens. That is why we are now called upon to act. And we have to do more than just write letters and read the replies. Rather, we have to shine a light on the facts. What is without doubt is that we should protect the private sphere. And for that reason, in my view, we should not be transmitting any more data to the United States. The SWIFT program should be suspended until further notice. European civil rights should not be sacrificed on the altar of our relationship with the United States. We need to investigate all the actions of the NSA. This should be of great concern to us and we can't simply pretend that nothing has happened as we have done so far because that is what we have tended to do so far and that has led to the systematic violation of European data protection standards that surely cannot be in our interest. It's high time that we sent out a signal, a signal that is heard loud and clear on the other side of the Atlantic. We proceed uh, with the catch the eye procedure and I will firstly give the floor to colleague Coferati.
Grazie, Presidente. Thank you very much, Madam Commissioner. I think that in such a sensitive issue, it's possibly better that we don't bandy around these lofty political arguments and rather that we show good sense. You know, we're talking about denouncing possible espionage, so what we need to do is carry out an investigation to ascertain whether in actual fact has been such an incident of espionage because there are suspicions and so perhaps we should suspend the deal we're talking about while an investigation is ongoing. Now if at the end of an investigation there is real evidence to show that a crime has been committed then we should call into question the agreement that we have signed. So we should have an investigation, suspension, and then once we have the facts, we can suspend the agreement. O Sinadelfo Sengstrom. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Commissioner, the world has been shocked by, by the revelations uh, from the Snowden files. We've learned how the NSA are engaged in industrial espionage against Brazil, how they're uh, doing political espionage again against the, the uh, political leaders' meetings, and how they're targeting ordinary citizens all over Europe. Surely, I mean, if this is not enough for the Commissioner to, to agree to suspend the agreement and start a proper investigation, what does have to happen? Mr. Elmstrom, colleague Pasca. Thank you very much, Madam President, uh, Commissioner. I would certainly agree with the uh, colleagues who have just spoken. Our negotiations, our proposals on the activities of the NSA should not simply be hysterical. Our reactions need to be based on fact and we need to uh, really find out the uh, uh, real events. We also need to be clear about the rights of the European Union. Now the uh, letter from uh, Mr. Cohen cannot replace the activities of our own uh, uh, um, intelligence authorities. We do need to g uh, consult Europol and confirm the facts of the case. On that basis we should inform our American uh, uh, friends of the uh, results. We should not simply allow the American authorities to do whatever they fancy. Europe's citizens, primarily Europe's younger citizens, are uh, better qualified and more informed than ever. They know what our rights and duties are, so I think that we should have to keep coming back to this kind of problem. Благодаря госпожо председател. В светлината на действия екстремизъм, мисля, че всички разбрахме, че няма какво. Now, extremism is not what we need here. It's not simply a, a question of what happens in Europe, but a question of what happens on the other side of the uh, Atlantic. It seems that for years now there's a kind of Gestapo out there that constantly spies upon citizens. Now, our democratically elected governments have not done anything about this. Uh, if this system is to be used against European citizens, I think it's not acceptable. I have lived in a totalitarian state, but there was virtually no crime back then. And I can tell you that I don't need security of that type. I want freedom. The SWIFT accord should be cancelled. Thank you very much. Uh, the TFTP agreement is an international agreement that we have negotiated. Uh, some of you didn't like that agreement. You voted no. That's fine. That's your right. Uh, some of you voted yes, but reluctantly. But we, you, voted for this agreement with a very large majority in this House. And we negotiated together with very clear provisions on scope, on data protection, on the different rules, who had access, etc. We have made reviews 
uh, on that, showing that the agreement is, is respected, proposals to improve it, uh, and we have also made an assessment, as asked by you, of the usefulness of the system. That report is, is ready, but I've kept it a little bit on hold because we have these discussions and the allegations. And in that review that I will share with you very soon, uh, the, the, um, on the usefulness, it does give very clear evidence that this agreement has helped the United States, but also Europe, to track terrorist financing and been very useful in some investigations. Now, you will agree, even if you don't like this agreement, that we cannot suspend an agreement based on media allegations. We need to ask questions. Those media allegations have been and are severe enough for me, from the Commission side, to ask very pertinent questions to the Americans. I've been writing letters, I've been having telephone, uh, phone calls, and had a very long personal meeting with Under Secretary Cohen this Monday. He answered a lot of questions. There are still some questions to be put. I, I believe that some of you from the Libre Committee will go to Washington and have the possibility to put questions on your own uh, to this and have clarifications. We have been, he has assured us that there has been no breach of the agreement that NSA do not have direct access to the SWIFT database in Europe. And I have asked to get that in writing. Uh, we also discussed what many of you mentioned in this letter on <clears throat> other SWIFT format. We discussed that in detail. As you know, there are other SWIFT format uh, used by financial institutions worldwide. This is also indicated in the preamble of our agreement. They are not covered by our agreement. For instance, it could be a SWIFT format that comes from a third country who are in another investigation and they alert the, uh, the NSA or the American authorities for normal police uh, work and law enforcement investigation. That is not a breach of the agreement. I have asked for more clarification to fully understand how this works and to be absolutely sure that these mechanisms are not in conflict with the TFTP agreement. Uh, I also asked about this manual that some of you referred to and we have seen also in, in, in some media. <coughs> and uh, in answer to this, Under Secretary Cohen told me that NSA officials do get a training on how financial systems work and how a swift format message is interpreted, but he assured that the NSA officials are not trained to track down the codes of SWIFT or do not access illegally the TFTP uh, database. So this is where we are from, for the moment. We are still waiting for some, uh, some more clarifications and some more uh, in writing. Then we have the broader uh, work that goes on in different working groups. The work that you are doing here uh, in the inquiry committees, the, Europe, uh, the European Commission, DG Home together with DG Just, and the, the uh, Lithuanian Presidency, we have this working group on data protection because we have all been alarmed about uh, NSA and about alleged spying on European citizens. I'm also concerned about this and we take that very seriously. There we have discussions and we hope that that will lead uh, to, to some concrete proposals on how to improve the data protection for European citizens. And we also follow very closely what President Obama actually said, that this might have gone too far and that he is seeking uh, support in Congress to more clearly regulate what NSA does and does not. But as I've said before, at this sta stage our contact with SWIFT and the US government have not revealed any evidence that the TFTP agreement has been violated. Therefore, I do not intend to propose a suspension of the agreement. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Commissioner Malmström. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, this discussion, uh, there is no such procedure, Mrs. Inveld. So the discussion is uh, concluded and let me remind you that uh, the relevant resolution will be voted in the next plenary session in October 2. Thank you very much. Can we now proceed? To the next item, uh, it's an oral question to the Commission, uh, strengthening cross-border law enforcement uh, cooperation in the European Union. Could I give the floor to Mr. Lopez Aguilar? Thank you very much, uh, Madam President. We all agree that cross-border crime is on the increase in the European Union. The final report uh, from uh, the Crim Committee 
states that unequivocally, as uh, does uh, the serious and organized crime trend assessment in their most recent assessment uh, carried out by Europol. Uh, they say that a new strain of uh, offenses are being committed uh, through networks, networks that operate internationally with different partners and in uh, different areas simultaneously. This. Uh, means that it's very easy to uh, commit crimes, cross-border crimes, and it means, too, that uh, there are no specific centers of gravity uh, uh, where criminals operate. Uh, and because of this, we think uh, that these criminal networks uh, should be combated uh, jointly using all cross-border mechanisms available to us in an efficient manner in order to exchange information and coordinate our operational activities. Uh, so we're faced with a huge challenge here. The entire EU is faced with this uh, challenge. Uh, and I think that we need to see how to better organize our, ourselves in order to better exchange information uh, in, with the proper implementation of EU legislation so that uh, we can detain criminals more quickly, uh, respecting the fundamental rights of European citizens. Uh, I think that there is a way of collecting, processing, and exchanging data um, in the European Union uh, um, between law enforcement authorities at legal and uh, uh, law enforcement level. However, these tools uh, were, have been designed and have been developed uh, gradually uh, uh, depending on need. And very often there is overlapping uh, of uh, tools used. Very often these are used inefficiently. There is insufficient democratic oversight. Uh, and. Uh,